So, all right. Well, I get to uh, we get to shift gears very early in the show this morning. We get to uh, go to something. I don't know that you know a whole lot about Jamie Grace. Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. Uh, you've heard the new song, song Jake. Be- beautiful day. Oh yeah. 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 Well, let's get Bob up to speed. J- uh, Bob, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very preppy. <laughs> it is very peppy. Peppy, peppy, and preppy, probably. Yeah. yeah. Got a little preppy. Bill's going to give us a little sample. Wake up and smile. Because it's been a while. It's been like a whole day since I stopped. So you could hold me. But this child away. So, peppy and preppy is probably a good way to describe Miss Grace's approach to this song. So, we're going to go ahead and go right into the interview with uh, Jamie Grace. Go ahead, Bill. All right. With me on the phone is Jamie Grace. Jamie, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your new song, Be- Beautiful Day. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I wrote it with like my favorite writers, and it's been so fun to sing it live. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Well, I tell you, you know, so much has changed since the last time we talked. You were doing Winter Jam, and we talked about, you know, writing the lyrics in your dorm room floor, and now you're, you're going <laughs> to studio. So tell me how, how different this must feel. Yeah, well, first of all, um, I mean, you mentioned my dorm room. I graduated university a year ago, and that was one of the weirdest things in the world. Like, I mean, I wake up now, like, on a Tuesday morning when I usually will be class, in class at 8 a.m., and I'm literally just like, what do I, like, what do, I do? Like, <laughs> it, it still feels weird to, like, not be in school. I'm, like, kind of itching a little bit for class, and I'm thinking about going back. But um, it's just it's been amazing. I mean, I, I love touring full-time, and I love recording all the time, and um, it's just been a huge blessing. Like, I was making music in college, but now it's all I, all my focus is to music, and so it's a huge blessing, and it's a privilege, and I just think it's really cool that I get to make music, and it's even cooler that people listen to it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this weekend you were at Night of Joy. It had to be an amazing experience. Yeah, that was really cool. I mean, I, I had never, um, I had never actually been to Night of Joy before. Um, up until last year, um, Toby played and Mac played it, and he invited me on stage for a song and a half. And so that was really cool because I got to sing. And I mean, the, the energy of Night of Joy is just is incredible. Everybody's just so pumped and so excited. And it's also really cool because you know, um, there's a lot of people there that are there to hear Christian music and then there are some people there that don't know anything about Christian music then there are some people there that have no idea there's a concert going on and they're just walking around like what and so that's really cool because you just get to be a part of, of, of so many different lives and, and it's a really cool ministry opportunity but um, yeah when I played there this year I mean it was also really cool like people knew Beautiful Day and I was so super honored and thankful to all the local radio stations that have been playing it because they definitely helped me in my performance that people were like singing it definitely helps with the energy well you mentioned toby and i I think it's only fair to mention first off is uh let you speak a little bit about the influence of toby mack and his discovery of you and the signing you over to uh, goatee records so you want to speak to that for a few minutes here and kind of get everybody caught up on just how amazing he is to these artists yeah i mean he's kind of weird i'm just kidding um no he's i mean toby's super cool like uh I, i signed with him i think a little over three years ago um, or actually probably right at three years ago now. And um, he heard my music on YouTube and reached out to me and my mom, who's my manager. And the three of us met at a coffee shop. And we I mean, we talked about music, but we also just like, talked about the Lord. And he like talked about like his wife and his kids. And we talked about like my dad and my siblings. And we were just like talking about family. And, like, the impl- and my parents are pastors and, you know, and they travel a bit doing ministry. And he travels doing ministry. So it was really cool because we were able to talk about just like family and like the importance of family and like how you have to be diligent to that. And it was cool because we, even now with, you know, with Toby, he inspires me with my music and he's an incredible artist and he helps me write great songs. But, um, I just, I'm always so blessed by how much he encourages me to stay close to my family and how much he reminds me to stay in the word of God. And that's just really cool that he is all about the music, but he's not only about the music and that's, that's a huge blessing. All right. So, and let's set the record straight. Who is doing the little background vocal at the beautiful day there? Who, who, who is doing that? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. I was just like feeling super manly that day. Is that what and that is? I was just like, be- be- beautiful day. And then it just happened. <laughs> there's all these, these background vocal in there. And I, yeah, we, there's no, we're not, we're neither confirming or denying who that may be, is what you're saying. It's either me, Toby, or, um, 
Jason Crab. All one right. of the three. Well, there we go. So I'm not I'm not positive. I, I wasn't there, or maybe I was. I was. I was homeschooled, so I have a really hard time having. Well, our readers and listeners will have to uh, make a judgment on their own <laughs> when they hear the song if they haven't heard it already. All right, so let's go to. <laughs> Another adventure for you. I mean, it's got to be, this is all happening really, really quickly. So yeah. you have you have a movie next month. You're going to be in Grace Unplugged. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited about that. I mean, I've been, I've been acting. My family says I've been acting my entire life, and they say that I've been acting crazy my entire life. I mean, I would be seven years old, and I would sit in my room, and I'd be on the couch, and I would have an interview with Oprah, like, Oprah was interviewing me, and I would ask all the questions, and I would answer all the questions. But ever since I was a little kid, like I've just been fascinated with like cameras and video and movie scripts, and I've been writing scripts my whole life, and I've been asking for cameras since I was twelve. And so to be a part of an actual film is incredible. Um, it was very terrifying to be on set, and I remember when I walked on set, AJ Mashaka, who is the lead character, um, Grace, she plays a girl who is interested in music, but kind of goes about it the wrong way, and, and really kind of just a and her faith in her home and her family. I play her best friend. And our first day on set together, I was so nervous. Um, most ki- I'm 21, so most kids my age or a little older or younger remember Allie and AJ from Disney Channel. And so I was really nervous because she's Allie. Or sorry, wow, fail. She's AJ. And I was so terrified to meet her. But, um, I mean, she loves the Lord, and she is so sweet. And she said, you know what? Don't be nervous. We're going to have fun. So, I mean, it was fun to film the movie. It was fun to like see the trailer and to see the unfinished product and then when I saw the final product I was so impressed and I was so blessed by the film I honestly feel like anybody out there um, with a child who's ever felt like they maybe were having a hard time like encouraging their kids to make the right decision I think it's an incredible film and any kid who's ever felt like they didn't know if if you know their parents really believed in them or whatnot and I think even if that's not like a huge struggle I think we've all been there at one point where as a parent you have to look at the Lord and say God you have to teach them this lesson or as a child you look at God and you say God do my parents really even care so it's a really cool like movie that just shows so many dynamics of the family the family structure and I'm I'm really honored to be a part of it. Great. Well, that does arrive next month in October and you do have a song in there as well called holding on. I do holding on to my first record and it was written by um, Toby Mack and uh, Matt Hammett from St. Israel and some other really cool guys. And it's, I love, I mean, I love happy songs and I love dancing and singing, but it's a ballad. Um, And so I was really excited to do ballad. My, uh, character's not a musician at all, but um, they were they were gracious to put one of my songs in the film. So that was cool. Fantastic. And then, of course, we get to look forward to this fall. You'll be joining Toby Mac and, I mean, just an incredible lineup for the Hits Deep Tour. So tell us a little bit about uh, looking ahead to that and promoting that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, I did Hit Steep last year, and it was really cool. It was the very first time Toby had done Hit Steep. And um, basically, it's a tour where... Some of, you know, Christian music's favorite artists like Toby Mac and Brandon Heath and Mindy, so everybody gets together and they play their hit songs, and so they all play like a million songs, and I'm going to play like two. Um, I'm just kidding. Hopefully I'll get to play three this time. Thanks, beautiful day. Um, but we all get together and, and play the songs that, that, that radio has been so kind to play, and we sing them together. One of my favorite parts about the tour is that Toby's band, Diverse City, plays for all of us, and so not only is it this incredible dynamic of the music never stops. It's a dance party all night long. We're just dancing for Jesus and worshiping all night long. It's also really cool because I personally don't have a band. And so for like one night only, I get to, or one tour only, I get to play with a band. And not only it's a band, but an incredible band that they've become my big brothers and they love the Lord. And they're probably the best musicians on the planet. So I love it because everybody's favorite songs, everybody's favorite band. And it's a night where we just don't stop worshiping Jesus. And I cannot wait. No, it sounds absolutely awesome, and uh, the tour dates and stuff are going to be available. We're going to link to that on the website as well, so everybody can uh, easily track down how to get tickets in your city. We have to send Jay- Jamie back to studio. She's working on new. Al- when are we going to have this album, Jamie? When are we uh, going to have something drop here? <laughs> I think it comes out in two thousand like thirty. I think that's yeah, what I'm right. <laughs> You're right. So I feel like all of my answers are like so just like not answers. Like I'm not answering anything, but. <laughs> It really does come out really soon, I promise. That's all right. Well, I'm sure the fans are waiting for it. We appreciate your time <laughs> and you squeezing us in. Jamie Grace, everyone. Uh, we're going to have links to her website and follow her on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, you know what? God bless you. Just keep up the hard work. 
and uh, you have tons of fans out there loving you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. All right. We're back live. Uh, thanks again to Jamie Grace for joining us. Uh, what a great fun interview. She is, yes, peppy and preppy is uh, adjectives we will stick Very with. Much J- so. Good job, Jake, <laughs> on that. All right, Bob. So let's throw it over to you a little bit. We you know we've got uh, the Amoeba. Amoeba folks coming on here at the bottom of the hour. Anything else you want to squeeze in real quick before we have to take a break? Well, yeah, just a little update on uh, some previous news that uh, the Global Dispatch dot uh, com has been covering, and we actually had an interview a few weeks ago with uh, a member of the Martin County Health Department. Is the dengue fever situation that's going on down there on the Treasure Coast of Florida? Um, they had a big. Uh, news conference Thursday and the number of cases is now up to 18 and they're all locally acquired which means it's in the mosquito population which is a big concern and they're actually going to start doing a a type of survey much like what they did in Key West in 2009 uh, when they they had a dengue fever outbreak where they're going to be looking for volunteers to do, um, let them draw blood for dengue fever testing to try to figure out um, the epidemiology of the area. So um, for residents of Florida, I'm not sure if there's a concern right now that this, uh, this viral disease will spread outside of that area, but um, clearly health officials are, are taking every measure they can. Obviously, you just need to be a little more cautious about uh, mosquito protection and that kind of thing this time of the year. Anyway, a lot of uh, sitting water and that kind of thing increases the risk. Um, From a pop culture standpoint, I know you uh, give me a lot of shout-outs for my work there, and I appreciate that very much. But we definitely uh, got you pretty hard and heavy last night with some news there. Got a Benedict Cumberbatch giving a a Sherlock Season 3 update where he's talking about the new villain in the new season. We got a little preview there from Claire Danes talking about uh, Homeland returning here in a couple weeks on Showtime, as well as the uh, new Marvel spinoff. It's called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That starts on ABC. So TV is definitely exploding right now. I'm trying to get a, a great guest on with us later in the month to try to see if we can get some expertise from them because there's a lot of great TV stuff happening this time of the year. So anything else before we go to break? Well, um, what did Rand Paul have to say about this whole situation in Syria? You know, the, the cool thing about Rand Paul, he went on with Hannity, and I know he's probably under a lot of heat for even going on Hannity. However, uh, the coolest thing was right from the get-go, he says, I just don't see the need to go to war there. I just don't, you know, he doesn't get it. And the best part is when he talks about Russia and the U.S. and Putin's comments or whatever, he refers to them and he says, quote, they just need to stop digging at each other like seventh graders. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Paul. That's fantastic. <laughs> so with that, it's probably nothing better than to use that as a go to break and use uh, use Jamie Grace. Let's go to break with Jamie Grace. This is Brandon from Dispatch Radio, and you probably hate taking your vehicle to the shop just about as much as I do. That little noise, that wobble, that rattling sound, well, we know it's probably something really bad, so we put it off and put it off. But I'm here to tell you about my friends over at Stouts Auto. Whether it be brakes, alignment, tires, AC, these are folks who just want to get you in and get you out, treat you right doing it. We have two locations in the area, 18300 US 19 North and Clearwater, and 1801 Belcher and Largo. There's two numbers, 727-400-6955 in Largo, 727-475-6006. Check them out, give them a call. You can go to their website at stoutsauto.com. Tell them the Global Dispatch sent you. There's a great youth mentorship program in the greater Tampa Bay area. Mission Flight United is a nonprofit organization which reaches out to kids, especially teens, who love aviation and want to fly. Whether they have an interest in helicopters, fixed wing airplanes, or aviation mechanics, Mission Flight United offers education, flight simulation, and great life application skills to help in all of these areas. For more information on their weekly classes or to make a tax deductible donation, contact the instructor Dana Walker at 207. 207- Two three three zero six six nine. With every fifty dollar donation, you get a one hour demonstration and can schedule a flight with Dana to see for yourself what Mission Flight United has to offer. Again, call Dana at two zero seven two three three zero six six nine, or simply Google Mission Flight United. 